This hippo went from kissing and doting on this baby hippo to carrying it in its mouth and snuffing life out of the little lad within seconds. We know hippos are very territorial, but to do this to their own kind, come on, there must be more to it. And to think that he killed the baby hippo because he fell in love with its mother shows how much more there is to this story. Okay, before you start judging hippos, let's take a look at other times animals have killed their own kind. Let's begin. Okay, so hippos are bad animals, we get it. These guys are so intolerant of other animals, humans, and as it would turn out, they even hate their own kind. They can't seem to stand the sight of babies, especially when it's not theirs. But what could make them so mean? Hippos live in large herds, usually led by the Supreme Hippo Overlord. Sorry, I mean the dominant male. And this dominant male gets all the women. I wonder what they expect the other males to do with their sexual urges. Hmm, let's leave that thought for another day. So when the other sex-deprived males get fed up with not having someone to warm their bed at night, they attempt a coup. A coup that mostly ends badly for the contenders. The only good news for the hippos that lost is that he's too big for the mouth of the dominant male to cause any serious damage. But how does this have anything to do with the poor calves, you say? Well, it has everything to do with them. First, it's his mom they're fighting for in the first place, and secondly, who else do you think they're going to transfer all that aggression to? So you see, it's not the hippo's fault, it's just how Mother Nature made it. From time to time, animals kill their own kind, especially the young, for a couple of reasons. And this is known as infanticide. This term simply means killing a young offspring by a mature animal of the same species. That's basically what I've been saying all day. I don't know why they had to come up with a name that rhymes with insecticide to explain it. These animals kill young offspring for reasons ranging from trying to preserve their bloodlines, reserving resources for only the fit ones, eliminating a rival's lineage, and getting sick of changing diapers every now and again. Scratch that last part. I don't think that applies with animals. Okay, back to talking about big bad adult animals. Well, since the wolf isn't on this list, I think we owe them a bit of an apology. And yes, lions do it too. Where do you think the Simba story came from? Similar behavior is seen in male lions, but they don't do it so they can become king after Mufasa dies. They do it so they can have a chance to mate with their mother. Pretty messed up, right? I think you'll do the same when you're in their shoes. Why? Let me explain. Lions generally kill cubs that are roughly nine months old or younger after successfully taking over from the previous ruler. Bear in mind, he was the only one with the mating rights. Of course, the mother will bravely try to protect her cubs, but since male lions have only a two-year window to pass on their genes and the lionesses only give birth once every two years, you'll understand why the lions take out the cubs of their predecessors as a matter of necessity. And it's because the lionesses don't ovulate while lactating or breastfeeding a cub. Therefore, killing her child will ensure that she gets pregnant so that the new ruler can pass on his genes. So you see, they're not baby killer or infanticide perpetuators by choice. It's a pure case of survival of the fittest. That's what the jungle is all about, isn't it? Also in the forests of India, gray langurs have been known to kill infants. These old world monkeys are social animals that live in groups consisting of a dominant male and multiple females. You guessed it, he has a reproductive monopoly within the group. So for a chance to mate, the other subordinate males engage in a very aggressive struggle with the dominant male. Just like with lions, if they succeed in overthrowing the previous government, unrelated infants of the females are then killed. If you know you're related to our past leader, please rise for recognition. Quite a good number of you. Guards! You know what to do. The new leader would go so far as going after the babies by himself, injuring and sending away as many as possible. After all, if you want something done well, you do it yourself. New herd ruler. Hey, isn't that the son of Tugui? Mother Zebra. No, he just has his nose. New herd ruler. Like hell he does. After him at once. Although not very common among zebras, this new herd ruler is on a mission to kill the last foals that are not of his bloodline. He tries to drown this foal by the river, but a loose grip and the presence of the foal's troubled mother don't make the job easy. While most mother zebras allow their child to be taken without putting up much of a fight, 
This mother zebra put it all on the line to save her baby. And it's good to see that mother and child win this time, but that foal will have to look over his shoulder for the rest of his life. You may be shocked that such an innocent looking creature could practice such a dark culture, but you'll be more shocked when you discover what some fish do with their young. While we're in no support of what these males do to their own kind all in the name of passing down their genes, I suggest they set some kind of criminal court for these murderous males. They are better than some fish. At least they don't eat their own children. Guppies, not the males this time around, will eat their own babies not because they're witches, but because they're stressed out or need to replenish their fat storage. Oh, did I just give birth to that cute little fry? I bet he tastes just as good. Yep, he does. This is what's referred to as filial cannibalism, and they do it for a couple of reasons. It could be a result of a spillover response prompted by stress, especially for those in captivity, or to replenish the fat mother guppy lost during pregnancy or weed out fry that's less adept at surviving. Hey kids, let's play hide and seek. Anyone who gets spotted gets eaten. Let's go. Although this would be a very sick game to play with your kids, some mothers wouldn't mind playing it too, considering all that their kids have cost them. Okay, so we've been able to look at a few cases of animals killing their young, and here's a quick recap of what we found. When male animals kill their kind, the younger ones, they do it to ensure that their mothers give them new ones. However, when females do it, they do it to stay in shape and come up with other reasons so they don't look bad. See you next time.